guys, I'm Stevie, and today we're gonna talk about how lesbians don't get STDs. So many people believe that women who only sleep with other women are at such a low risk of getting STDs or STIs or can't even get them at all. Because of that, so many of us don't get tested and end up spreading them even more. How about we cut that shit out? The fuck? So the last time I had all the way sex, I got tested. But then the last time that I hooked up with someone, I didn't. What the fuck is all the way sex? <laughs> We don't have a ton of studies about this, but the truth is that women who sleep with other women are at a lower risk across the board of contracting STDs, STIs, and close contact infections. Close contact infections are things you can contract without even having sex. So just skin to skin contact. Also a truth is some specific STDs, women with vulvas who only sleep with other women with vulvas are more likely to spread. Can you guess which one it is? It's one that you get from eating a bunch of pussy, so duh. How the fuck do I make sure someone's clean? Hmm, first of all, don't ask anyone if they're clean. Instead ask, when's the last time you were tested? And have you had sex with anyone else since then? Wait, if they have had sex with someone else, does that mean I don't get sex? What? No, it means you have safe sex. I thought this video was about how to not spread infections and I thought the only way to do that was to not have sex. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense because most of the USA practice abstinence only education. Basically makes us all believe that the only way to live a healthy and baby free life is to never have sex until you're married and ready to pop babies out. Specifically heterosexual babies. Wait, <laughs> heterosexual marriage. <laughs> and even though we're not talking about the sex that will 100% create a baby, we're all still completely brainwashed by this problematic education. So we end up believing that we can't have a bunch of sex and a healthy life. When in reality, having open communication with your casual sex partners is probably the healthiest thing you can do. Oh. Talking about it doesn't necessarily dictate whether or not you're getting laid. Honestly, you can do whatever you want. But talking about it lets each person make an informed decision and give informed consent on the risk that they're taking with their own body. Another way to look at it is if you're not giving your partners full disclosure, you're not getting full consent. Whoa. Anyway, two, go get tested together. If it's someone you're interested in having sex with and you get along. God, I hope, I hope those things go in hand in hand with most of you. You should suggest going together. I have friends that have done this with romantic partners and they're still together and then they're like, oh, remember our first date where we went to get tested together? How cute. <laughs> Wait, why is that so sweet? Right? Precious. Alternate option is I went to get tested with my friend Jiminyka. <laughs> it was so fun. Geminique is a Gemini. Three, being a slut is sexy. So remember that before you shame someone for how many sexual partners that they've had recently. I've heard of slut shaming. I literally hate that phrase, but okay. It's a popular internet phrase. Someone having more sexual experiences doesn't necessarily mean that they're more likely to carry an STI. To be honest, I have friends and relatives who have only had sex with four people and have never used protection, which is way more risky than my friends who have had sex with 128 people and used protection every time. Protected sex, consent, and being nice to each other is a huge part of highly sexually active communities of people, like the BDSM, polyamorous, and swinger communities. Which means, in a lot of ways, people that are having a lot, a lot, a lot of sex are normally a lot, a lot, a lot safer when they have that sex, in my experience and some studies. Whoa! Yeah, not to say that people that have less sex are necessarily unsafe, but that's kind of what's up. Teen pregnancy and STI rates are way, 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 way higher where sex ed is bogus. Do people still say that word, bogus? I don't know, I just think this shit is important because all of us need to respect our bodies and the bodies of our partners by educating ourselves, getting tested, communicating, and getting consent for each specific sex act. Um, you basically said girl on girl is less risky. Who says girl on girl? This is not a niche porn. This is an educational YouTube video. And to answer your question, just because you're about to sleep with someone with a vulva who identifies as a woman and a lesbian does not mean that you know what kind of sex she has and with who. Sexual orientation and sexual behavior are different. What does determine your susceptibility to disease is which sex acts you do and what anatomy you and your partner that you do it with has. Where do I do the testing tests? 
go to this website and put in your zip code. Also send me a screen cap of all the clinics that you have near you so I can see how few or how many you have because I'm curious and if you don't have many then I'll respond to your tweet with you poor baby. Okay, when do I get tested? Great question. Before you plan to have sex with a new partner and after you have spontaneous sex with a new partner. Everyone is different and everyone has different rules and requirements for certain sex acts that they wanna do. I fuck up sometimes, but normally I get tested before a new partner and I have decided to exchange fluids. And if I'm making out with a bunch of people, I love spin the bottle, y'all. It was so fun. I'm a child. Then I'll get tested once or twice a month for any like oral things. Yes. You can get STIs from kissing. Ah, oh, all right, all right, all right. So why? What are the perks? What are the perks to getting tested? Hello, sexual health is the perk. What do you want, a trophy? My doctor gives me stickers, so. Okay, perks. Sometimes they give you stuff like stickers and lollipops and condoms. Other perks. They are really, really, really nice. It's real fast and real easy. It shows that you want to respect yourself and others. So that if you do have a positive test for an STI, you can get treatment and slow or stop outbreaks or damage to your body. You can go with a friend or go as a date and that's super fun and cute. I just want you guys to go on STI testing dates and friend dates and send me pics. Remember that you can only get tested for HPV that causes cervical cancer by getting a pap smear. So you have to go to the gyno for that one or a family doctor, I think. I think a family doctor can do it too. I'm not a doctor, guys. What is safe sex even? Can I please have just the tips? Wow! 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 You can use dental dams. I don't have any right now because I bought one for that last video that I showed you. So I'm gonna play that clip. This is a dental dam. This is what it looks like. It smells like blueberries. Okay. How you use it is, you hold either side with your hands, you place it over the vulva, and then you go to town. You can do it either really tight or really loose so that it goes like this on the vulva. But only use one side of it. Do not flip it over and use the other side because then what's the fucking point? Also can be used for butt stuff. You're welcome. You can put them on pussies and buttholes. Don't share toys and or put a new condom on the toy when you switch from person to person. Clean sex toys before and after use. There's a higher chance of contracting an STI if um, one of you is on your period. Do not brush your teeth right before oral sex. This can cause your gums to bleed a little bit, which increases your chances. Make sure to file your nails down after you clip them to make sure there are no sharp edges that can break through gloves or and then cut vaginal tissue. Do not rub your naked pussy on another naked pussy. Whopping pussy juice can spread yeast infections and bacterial vaginosis, which are not even considered STIs, but you can spread them. Don't go from asshole to pussy hole. Same reason. You can get UTIs. Do not go from any of your holes to any of their holes. <laughs> this includes your mouth hole. For instance, if you are using saliva as lube and you're touching her vulva and then you go to your mouth and then go back to her vulva, that is swapping fluid. If you need to get saliva, get it from her mouth and then go back to her vulva. Typey, typey. Can you actually go back to the dental dam part? I just mean, what is a dental dam? Okay, so if you don't have any dental dams, you can use saran wrap. Make sure it's not the microwavable kind. The microwavable kind is porous and it doesn't fucking work, so it defeats the purpose. I'ma show you how to make one with a glove. So, here's your regular ass glove, right? You have your scissors, you have your glove. You're gonna go like this. You're gonna leave these two finger holes because they have a cool use that you're gonna see in a second. So you fold it over, did you see that? There's two fingers on this side and three fingers on the right. And it's going diagonally. And then you cut, preferably with not rusty scissors. And then you cut open the side and then you have a dental dam. And then you have these two holes for vaginal or anal penetration or both in the butt or both in the vagina. And then this goes over the vulva and then you can go blah, 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 blah. You just made a dental dam. Congratulations. Also send me pics of you doing this, cause learning. How else can you make a dental dam? With a condom. Push the condom to the side and tear it open with your fingers. Pull it out, you take the tip of it, roll it down a little bit, take the tip of it. Be 
These are so rusty. Rusty scissors would be a cool lesbian band name. Then you take it down the side like this and cut. And then you unroll it and then you have a dental dam. And it's already lubed. Good job. Wow! So if you don't know each other's status, do not swap fluids. That includes vaginal juice. Vaginal juice? That includes pussy juice, blood, spit, snot, tears. Yes, you can get herpes and chlamydia in your eyeballs. So just like don't, don't swap those fluids. You can avoid fluid exchange by using dams, condoms, putting condoms on toys. I'm ready. You know what? Go have fun. Better to be safe than sorry. Keep in mind, you can, you can get STIs from kissing. And a lot of STIs and STDs do not have immediate or recognizable symptoms. So you can just have no symptoms, nothing you've even noticed or it is nothing has changed and you could have an STI. So don't just wait for you to have a symptom for you to go get tested. You should be getting tested every time you have a fluid exchange or even more frequently if you want to. Some of the things you can get from kissing are herpes, gonorrhea, chlamydia in the throat, syphilis, and others. I'll be honest, you're making me not want to have sex. Oh, the internet is so dramatic. Never thought I would actually say this, but the only 100% safe sex is abstinence. But knowing your risk and measuring that against your reward is a surefire way to sexual liberation. STDs don't have to be terrifying and a pretty high percentage of people do have or have had According one. to the American Sexual Health Association, one in two people will contract an STD or STI by the age of 25. Oh, well then. How do you have 100% safe sex with another person? That's impossible. Also, mutual masturbation is a real sexy way to have super safe sex. Or phone sex. Or cyber sex. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We actually removed the term cyber sex from the ether in 2008. So. I'm not here to be cool. I'm here to teach you about safe sex. How and when do you say something or anything? And how and what do I say and what to say? What do I say? Ask your doctor all of the questions you have. There are no dumb questions. There are only dumb fucking people that are scared of looking dumb so then they don't ask questions. And most importantly, be honest with your partners as soon as possible about your results. If they are at risk of contracting any illnesses, it's your job to tell them. Also, you can have the clinic contact them to keep your name anonymous if you're like real scared of them or something. I can do this. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget the people you wanna have sex with. Be nice to each other. There's a link in the description for where to get tested. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm about to put out some videos about like what to do after you are sexually assaulted and you want to have sex again. Um, butt stuff, how to come at the same time, etc. So I'll see you in those videos. Bye guys. Thing. How to eat pussy. Why am I singing Despacito? This would be real low. How the fuck? Jesus.